This is the Wisco Boater Channel. My name is Chad. The video from last time a couple of weeks ago was to take a look at this Crown Line uh, 180 BR. It's listed as a 185. It's actually a 180 BR. Um, there is no 185 from the year 2000. So did some research and uh, found that there's a 180 and a 182. Uh, this is a 180. As you can see right here on the trailer, I didn't notice this last time. It is a 180. So I uh, made an offer on the boat. It was accepted. And uh, it's a couple weeks later here with uh, Marcus to do a mechanical inspection on today. So we're going to do a compression test. We'll run it, pull the drive, check the gimbal uh, and all that stuff. As long as everything goes well, should get closed on the boat here in the next couple of days and be on the water this weekend. So wish us luck today and uh, we'll get this inspection started. All right, we got Marcus here from Cubics Marine doing the compression test. We are on the sixth cylinder at this point. So far, so good. Yep. So our lowest one was 192, the highest was 197. So we're all good. Compression check done. All right, so Marcus just told me that the spark plugs that come out of this boat are their auto light spark plugs, but they're not the right ohms for this engine. So he has the correct spark plugs on his truck. So I'm going to put the new spark, the correct spark plugs in. Uh, I will have to pay for them regardless if I buy the boat or not, but $4.39 a piece and might as well have them do it while the uh, the compression test is being done. That way I don't have to worry about it later and if I buy the boat I've got new spark plugs. And if I do a full tune-up all I gotta do is change the cap and rotor and wires. So spark plugs are gonna get done. All right so we got the drive off. Uh, Marcus did find some water and gear lube in the bellows. So we just talked about that. Uh, it's gonna be written up on the report, so we'll figure out what to do there. But being an Alpha One, it's probably not as expensive of a thing to fix as Bravo Three. No. <laughs> no I had to replace on, the, on Clifford when I had that boat, the Regal, I had to replace the whole yoke and U-joint. Yeah, that was like 1500 bucks. I have one, or I'm sorry, you said it's two, and we have one, two, three, four, so they are all here. All right, so we just found that the exhaust valve flappers are not supposed to be here. They're supposed to be up, uh, up a little higher in the uh, exhaust manifold area. So those have failed. So what do you do? You just put new ones in or? Yep. Yeah. You can install new ones there, they make kits for it. And then if you do that, a person might as well put new um, exhaust tubes, the rubber pieces that go with Yeah. This is why we do mechanical inspections. Don't buy boats without doing this, people. All right, so we got new gasket in place, bellows uh, adhesive in place, and the drive's gonna go back on. We got the uh, yoke greased up. The unfortunate part here is everything's going back together with new stuff, and the boat can't be run the way it is because those uh, exhaust flappers are no longer in place. And we gotta figure out where the water's coming from, probably bellows or somewhere water's getting in. So the drive goes back on and it's gonna have to be pulled again to be fixed. Which is, like I said, unfortunate that new stuff is going in and it's kinda all for nothing, but it's the way it's done.
This seems much easier than the Bravo 3. I've just done a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> They are definitely lighter. The main thing is to get these two center ones on. Otherwise you always get gear loop leaking out of where your monitor bottle goes. Ah, okay. No. No more leaks. All right, so the drive is now back on. Uh, Marcus just mentioned to me, fun fact, I didn't know this, that Alpha 1s um, are removed with the, uh, with the boat in forward. Bravo 3s come off in neutral. So that's something to keep in mind for the future. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do here is just fire it real quick. I know we don't have water hooked up to it, but we're just gonna fire it up and shut it right back off just to make sure it starts. All right, it starts. And the uh, the smoke you just saw there was uh, probably from the engine being fogged. Uh, the, the boat wasn't winterized, it was kept uh, inside, but uh, likely did fog the engine uh, for the winter. So smoke coming out, no big deal, just a little bit of fogging oil. So we're pretty much done with the mechanical inspection here, and we'll take some notes back to Brock, my broker, and see what, uh, See what we can do. We got a little negotiating to do here to see if we can get some money knocked off, or preferably, if we'll just go ahead and fix it, um, then I'll pay the uh, pay the um, the offer price of eleven thousand dollars. But uh, yeah, either money's got to come off the boat or needs to be fixed before close. But no big deal. That's again, that's like I said, that's why we do these mechanical inspections. This is going to cost about six hundred bucks. Um, but it's money well spent because had I just bought the boat and not known that, taken it out with those failed exhaust flappers, um, water and grease getting into the into the bellows, I would have had a much larger bill down the road um, anyway. So great that we did this. So um, I wasn't able to film the uh, pulling of the drive. I had to run a quick errand while he was doing that. So sorry I missed that. but. I'll get some, uh, get you another update here as soon as I can. But, and a special thank you to uh, Marcus Kubik, Kubik Marine, uh, Kewanee, Wisconsin is where he's at. If you're in the area, need some services, awesome guy, great to deal with. So, so thanks Marcus, appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this video of a uh, little detail of a mechanical inspection on a small boat. So Crown Line 180BR, still a thumbs up, just got to figure out how to put the, uh, just, just got to figure out how to wrap the deal up. So we'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.